Okay, Year 9, in this video we're going to be having a look at synoptic charts or simply weather maps. You would be familiar with seeing these on the news where the weather presenter or the meteorologist is standing in front of a green screen pointing out to the map describing the forecast for the weather over the, over the week, maybe two weeks. The meteorologist or the weather person is trying to use the information that is available generated by the um, simulators that they're using, information coming in from satellites and weather balloons to get a bit of a picture as to what the forecast is going to be rather than just sticking your head outside. So what we end up is this grid of different symbols all over the normal political land masses that we know as the countries. So what do all these squiggles mean? Before we jump into the activity of these six questions on page 29 of labeling what they are and identifying what they are, we're going to have a look at our cheat sheet. For you guys, it's on the opposite page. So to begin, the symbols of the lines. The lines form up the basis of the overlay, which is what I, which is what I <laughs> tongue tied, which is what is placed over the top of the normal map, like what's on my desk. Okay, so you can imagine lines being drawn all over the map, and each of the lines represent, as it says here, an equal air pressure. So if the line was here and went through Nigeria and then through Sudan and then through Ethiopia, all along that line, the air pressure would be 1,020, if that's what I had written. And then a line that is drawn down here, maybe going through Ghana, Nigeria, Sudan, might be 1,018, and they will move down in different chunks. These are called isobars. One of the things that we can use isobars for is seeing how close or far apart they are. The closer the isobars are together, the stronger the winds, because the pressures are pushing up against each other. You can imagine having two amounts of pressure, high amounts of pressure pushing in and they're close and they're wedged in together. That's creating a lot of energy. When you have energy, you have wind. And the further these pressures are apart, the less butting up against each other there is, and then there is less chance for wind. Moving down, we can see that we have our isobars and our lines moving in a circle and at the very center is a h the h represents a high pressure system it is a area of air pressure where the air is sinking getting heavy and pushing back down towards the earth this is where it might get a little bit tricky but think about it that the earth the globe around it we have the atmosphere but imagine that the atmosphere is more like a fluid okay this is something that pilots need to be thinking about when they're up in the air that aerodynamics is that they're more thinking about passing through and pushing through a fluid even though it's not a fluid it's a gas and we can't see it it's got characteristics similar to that and when we have a high, dense amount of pressure that weight pushes down the air, and this generally leads to fine weather, good weather. So H, as Miss Valentine likes to say, H equals happy weather. The wind rotates around these systems in an anti-clockwise direction. So what do you need to take away from all of that? When you see a H on the map, 
it is leading to happy weather, fine weather, no wind, very little rain in the center. When we move down to our low pressures, it is the opposite. So when we find an L on the map, we have an area of rising air. Now, same sort of uh, mental model that we were just working with. Imagine that the air, so the mass of air that is floating above you is getting warmer, the hot air is rising, and then there is kind of like a gap, okay? So the air that was there is being lifted up higher, and to fill that empty space, because you can't just leave an empty space, you have air whooshing in, trying to come in and fill that gap underneath, okay? This draws air in, almost like a cyclone. It's sucking air, air in like a vacuum. And this will generally create cloudy weather and a good chance of rain. Because as that air rises very quickly, it's turned into condensation and then precipitation. The wind also rotates in a clockwise direction. Now down here, we've got an example of our ISO bars really, really close together. And this would be uh, an example of a tropical cyclone or a hurricane. This is an area of rapidly rising air. And we would normally also see this in a low pressure system where we're going to have huge amounts of rain, very destructive winds. Now, the last two things are our cold and warm fronts. Our cold fronts are blue and the little triangles are like little icicles. This separates warm and cold air with cold air behind the front. So when we have our line, and if the question was in what direction is the cold air traveling, you got to think that like these triangles are punching into a warm section of air. So in this case, for example, if I was going to draw my little directions on here, so I've got north just as a bit of a bearing, and I know that following these triangles that it's punching into a pocket over here of warm air, I can say that the front is traveling in. I'll let you guys think about it for a second. Here is south, here is east. So if you were thinking southeast, you were correct. The cold air behind this line is moving southeast. This would suggest, so say if there was a cold front coming towards where, say, a person was standing or a town was, then we can be predicting that there is going to be a fall in temperature that may bring rain and storms. The warm front is exactly the same, okay? In this picture, it is also moving in a southeasterly direction. It's bringing in warm air, and it is going to bring an increase in temperatures. Now, let's go to our activity, and then we can bring back our little cheat sheet at any time if we need to. So question number one, estimate the wind conditions on the east coast of Canada. Is it windy or is it calm? Right. So let's go hunting for Canada. What is obvious on this map over here? I've got the boot of Italy moving along. I know this is Spain. There's the UK um, sailing across the Atlantic coming over here. I've got Greenland up there, this section over here is Canada. So drawing my highlighter over the section of where it is meeting the east coast of Canada, we can see that we have two low pressure systems and 
the two lines, three lines, four lines are not very close together. Now, I know what you're thinking, but what about this little chunk down here? Does this count? It is a little bit conflicting. So in this case, if I was going to be giving a mark, is it windy or is it calm? You could really give an answer for both because the coastline of Canada is so long. Up here, there's really not a lot going on. Down here, it's experienced almost a bit of a cyclone that's coming off from the Atlantic Ocean. So you can put down windy or you could put down calm in this case. Now, it's not always going to be both options. That's just to show you the scope that we're working with and it's open to interpretation. Two, identify the pressure system over Greenland. So if I come up to Greenland, which is here, and this is Iceland, our little fella down here. Let's go around. Got a H in the middle. This is a high pressure system. Three, identify the pressure system over Norway. Now, Norway is over here. It is the slice of this peninsula right there. There is also a H in the middle. It is also experiencing a high pressure system. So both of these places are having a excellent day in terms of weather. No rain, very little winds. Um, we can see up the tor up the yeah, up the torf up the top of Norway. We've got a cold front coming in, so up here it's going to be cold. Um, here generally fine, and in Greenland, we've got a warm front coming in, so it's probably going to get warmer along the coast. Four, describe the types of fronts that are moving over North Africa. Right, where's that? We've got Italy here, Spain, and then if I was going to be getting on a boat, over in Italy, I'd be coming down here if I wanted to get into Egypt. So this, and again, we've got a large coastline. This is our North Africa section. So what type of front do we have? So the type of front that we have moving across North Africa, I would say the clearest one here is our cold front, which is coming along here. So I'm going to go with the cold front. Describe the type of front that is moving between Iceland and Greenland. So we already know where Greenland is. We already pointed out Iceland. I'm going to get a little a separate color. And we can see that the front that is moving along is our red one here, like half little rising suns, warm little suns coming along. So we are going to say the type of front is a warm front. Righto, last one, putting it all together. So using our weather skills. Describe the weather in Spain and this is happening on a Monday. I was going to say so on Monday. Don't write that in the sentence. On Monday, 20th of April. Now, you might not have that information on the chart when you're describing, but if you've got it, use it. It just helps with the description and helps you get Helps you get going with the description. What do we have happening? We have a couple of low pressure systems happening around Spain. And we've got some warm fronts coming in over this section here. Now, even though they are low pressure systems, 
the ISO bars are quite far apart. So what I would be saying based off this information is one, it's not windy. Two, there's no evidence that it is raining. And then three, warm temperatures are coming in. And that's what I can see, and I can only work with what I can see. So don't just guess, just describe what is over the continent itself. So on Monday, the 20th of April, the weather... Just want to get the camera right over it. There we go. The weather in Spain is experiencing no rain, little wind. If there was a high pressure system, I would be more confident in saying there's perhaps even no wind. But because we're surrounded by low pressure systems, I'm still going to say there's probably a little bit of wind, but the bars are so far apart, I'm not going to say it's, it's windy. So no rain, little wind with a warm front approaching and warm and warm fronts also bring in a chance of light showers um, but that's not happening today it might make landfall in the next day or so so there you go a couple of things there to unpack and I know that it might seem a little bit daunting with all the different lines and fronts but that's why your cheat sheet is so helpful, which you can refer back to during the little mini assessment that we're doing. Radio, make sure you got that information down and we'll have a discussion and then we'll have a go at the mini assessment.